Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second virtual meeting of the Pasadena Civil War Roundtable. I see that we have a lot of people from out of the area and that have heard about us. Um, if you could help us out a little in the chat that is on the top bar of your uh, screen, next, just to the left of the settings wheel, there's a, a little comment bubble. If you would comment if you're out of the area, where you're from and how you heard about our meeting. Uh, that would help us greatly in knowing how well our, our um, publication, our, pub our publicity is carrying. So we hope that you'll do that. Uh, secondly, since I'm the treasurer of the Civil War Roundtable, I'm going to put in a plug for the dues payments for the, the Roundtable. Uh, we do have stagnant costs that, uh, that we still have to um, have paid during this time of, of COVID. Uh, we still have newsletters. We still have um, uh, website costs and so forth. So we ask if you are um, interested in supporting the Pasadena Civil War Roundtable, the dues are $25 for an individual, $30 for a couple that would get the newsletter mailed to the same address. And you can do that, uh, you can pay that online at our website at PasadenaCWRT.org. And it's a, a tab that says uh, join or become a member. So uh, we, we hope that you will support us. Uh, if you're interested in supporting us a little bit more than a membership and want to make an extra donation, there is a patron tab on the website uh, that will take you to that spot. And you'll see who our, our patrons are for this year. Uh, it is a, a voluntary donation, but it does help to keep things going. And the patron donations specifically help us with bringing in out of town speakers when we do have live meetings again, uh, helping to pay their travel expenses. So we hope that you might consider that as well. Uh, I did see Nick come on the call. Yes, I'm here. Uh, did you have any announcements? Um, no, although uh, those of you who get the uh, issues of the call um, were informed that we had a uh, contact from one of our former members who moved back to Virginia. And that was kind of interesting. Once in a while, we hear from people who have been members in the past who have moved to other areas of the country. And in this case, Brad Forbush, who gave several talks for our roundtable, is now a volunteer with one of the battlefields back east. And uh, he sent me some things that he was doing some interesting research back there. But I put in uh, some things about what he was doing in the, the issue of the call that our members get. And did I see Michael Agnino come on the call? David, do you see his name anywhere? Uh, let me just check again. I had not seen him a moment ago. I see a Mike, but I don't think it's him. Uh, no, I don't see it. it doesn't, I don't see anybody that looks like it right now. Okay. Uh, Nick, did you uh, have any uh, announcements? Actually, yes. Um, uh, oh, something, somebody's echoing. Yeah, we're getting some um, echo. Let me see if I can catch that one second. I'll take care of that right now. All right, how's that? Oh, much sure. better. Anyway, um, for those of you who have been members for a while, normally um, our group is invited up to the Memorial Day services at Mountain View Cemetery <laughs> that are run by the Union veterans and various other groups. Unfortunately, this year, because of the virus, there was no public event up there. But uh, Mountain View Cemetery asked me to work with them on a video project, and we just started work on it, um, to tell the stories of some of the Civil War veterans and related people who are buried up there at the cemetery. So that should be going live on the Mountain View Cemetery website later uh, well, over the next few weeks, all that's up right now is an introduction saying that, the, that this series is coming. But the idea is that this is a way of remembering the stories of the Civil War veterans uh, who are buried locally and telling the public about the ones that they may never have heard of. So that's, um, I've recorded about 10 segments so far. They're just little short segments that are going to be going up on their website. That's great news, Nick. It's a, a nice alternative to missing out entirely on that special ceremony. Yes. Anything else, Nick? That's all that I had. 
Okay, then we will go forward with introducing our speaker who is going to mute all of you so that uh, you cannot speak or we can't hear your background information during his presentation. But if you want to ask questions of the presenter, uh, use that little chat bubble at the top of your screen next to the settings wheel and our speaker will be able to see those comments and uh, answer those questions at the end of the presentation. So our speaker this month is David Richardson, who is going to be presenting on the Civil War in color. David has been restoring and colorizing Civil War images for over 12 years. During that time, his work has appeared on the History Channel, Discovery Channel, book covers for Random House, Penguin Books, and his images are part of the exhibits at the American Civil War Museum in Richmond in the collection of the Gettysburg Heritage Center in the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, which is LACMA, and others. Each month his images are seen in Civil War News, and he has been a featured speaker for the Center for Civil War Photography, as well as the Surratt House. Colorizing images is something that has taken place since the very beginning of Civil War photography. And this month, David will share not only his colorizations, but also original hand colorized images from the Civil War. So without further ado, David, take it away. Uh, thank you, Janet. I appreciate it. And I was looking in there, and it looks like we do have a winner. Uh, it looks like that uh, uh, Chris uh, from Australia is our winner for the farthest uh, to be able to join us. So uh, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, I don't think that it's possible to get too much further than Australia, so uh, welcome there. Uh, I, I want to say thank you also for the opportunity to be able to make this presentation. Uh, I've given this presentation a couple of times in the past. I did go through and I updated it uh, for what we're doing here uh, tonight, and I brought in some new images and things. So uh, hopefully it will be of interest to you guys. So I want to talk a little bit about what it is that I'm uh, going to share with you. Uh, so uh, the images that we have on here, uh, these are all ones that are actually all period images. So every image that you're going to see is one that was taken during the Civil War. I've actually gone through and then I've restored those and then I've colorized those images uh, to be able to allow them uh, to be able to be seen in color. So there's no reenactors, there's no recreations, there's no modern images. All of these are historical period images and then I've just restored them and then colorized them. Along with that, I've also taken and put in uh, things in there uh, from uh, colorizations that were done during the period so that we can see that contrast between what it is that they would have during that time period and what it is that we have now. So we're going to be taking a look at some of that as well. Basically, when you're looking at an image, this is what we typically remember. I mean, this is what I remember uh, from uh, when I was in school, uh, that you know, the images uh, from the Civil War and uh, that was a kind of a grainy black and white photo. And it was like, OK, that's the image that we would see. Uh, what we didn't know and what I didn't realize, though, was that uh, people actually were interested in seeing what it looked like in color at the time. So you could actually pay to be able to have somebody hand color an image. And so here is an example of one that was done during the time period. So this was one uh, done during the Civil War uh, and that somebody would go in there and then colorize these images. Something that's kind of interesting here, if you look at this, uh, these soldiers here, this is Confederates. If you notice, it says Confederates, uh, Confederate dead in here. But you'll notice that it appears that they're wearing Union blue uh, in the uniforms. And the reason that is, is because that if you were, I mean, if you think about it, if you're looking at a black and white image, and that you've colorized it and you just put Confederate gray onto a, a, a soldier, uh, you're not gonna see much. So they would often go and they would hand color uh, the uh, Confederates uh, to be in, a, un a, in a, u a uniform that looked more like a Union uniform. So you did see a lot of that type of thing in here. So that's what we're looking at right now for that. But I wanted to be able to see what this would look like if we were able to bring it and to be able to put the technology and things that we have today. So here is the same image. And now we're seeing it uh, with the full color that we're able to bring to it today with the type of technology that we had. So this is exactly the same image, uh, but it, this is actually used from the, uh, the negative from the Library of Congress, and it allows us to be able to uh, see it, uh, obviously, in a much clearer fashion hand coloring was something that was done a lot. Uh, they were done uh, personally, so you could actually go and pay a little bit extra to be able to have one done, and you could do it privately to be able to have one uh, for yourself. So this is one that a soldier had, may have been sent back to their family. Here's a Confederate. 
notice this one, there's not a lot of color. Uh, they added a little bit to the cheeks, a little bit to, to uh, some of the brass elements, and that's about it. Not a lot of color. Other ones had more color. So here is the Zouave uniform, and you see that they had they put the red for the Zouave and the cap in there, and then some of the brass buttons and the buckle in there for that. So it would depend on what it is that uh, the photographer, the artist, uh, had available and what they could do uh, to be able to enhance those. Some of them uh, would actually do the same uh, from uh, their family, and they would take uh, pictures of their family. So here is a wife or sweetheart uh, that would uh, have an image colorized and then sent to him. Some of them actually did them themselves, and they would actually paint directly onto the tint type or onto the glass negative on there, and then uh, have that uh, sent to the soldier. Here's one of a child with a nice uh, flag in there uh, for that. Another one of uh, maybe uh, a couple of uh, children in there uh, for this, uh, and you see uh, some different elements in there that are uh, colorized. Some of it, they don't put much uh, color in. So the skin tones, they didn't do much with that, but they did add it into some other areas. Some of them, they added in quite a bit in here, and you'll see some things that you, they quite stand out, in my opinion, in there. So. Uh, the New York Infantry one in here. Uh, why would you choose these particular colors if it wasn't something that you were familiar with and if it wasn't something that you knew was uh, correct in there uh, for that? So uh, I thought those were fairly unique for that. Here's one of the ones that I really like, and they did a really, really nice job. You see the differences between the colors for some of the ones that they added in there. Some of them in here are really, really well done. And you see some of the private ones like this, they're really, really nicely done, very well executed in there, uh, and uh, very uh, much uh, in the detail for what they're putting in here. Here's another one that I really like, uh, just a nice color uh, in there for the uh, for the pants and for uh, the sash in there and uh, for uh, just some of the other elements. And then you see other uh, parts of it, uh, like some of the backgrounds that they didn't add much color, but they did add them into some areas. This is actually one of my favorites of the private ones in there. Uh, using this uh, to be able to see uh, some of the green of the uniforms, uh, to be able to show some of the things uh, for uh, some of the ones that were a little bit different or a little bit unique in there, uh, and they would do those, uh, and you could actually see that and kind of get an idea, this is something different or this is something uh, individual or special in there for that. So colorizing it was something, as I had mentioned, was something that was done uh, for uh, people on a private basis, uh, but uh, actually commercial companies would do it as well. So this is one that was done by uh, E.T. Anthony, uh, and uh, this is a stereo card that was done during the Civil War, uh, and they would actually have somebody go in and colorize these. So you could buy a set of uh, color uh, of, uh, of stereo cards for uh, for like a, a dollar in there, but then for a dollar and a quarter, you get a half a dozen of them, and uh, the, the, somebody would have gone in and colorized them. So for slightly more, you could actually get the color version in there. Most people did not choose to be able to do the color versions, so they're very rare today to be able to do them. And when you looked at them, that you did see uh, things in there where uh, that you could see the differences between somebody that was doing it uh, for an extra 25 cents, and they're mass producing these things uh, versus the private ones like we were looking at a moment ago, uh, where there's a lot more uh, quality and detail, in my opinion. So here's another one. Uh, this is one uh, that the, uh, they did of the uh, New York Suaves in there. And you can see some minor colors, a little bit with the grass in there. Uh, they added a little bit of color in there, and they added a little bit in the background for that, not a whole lot. Uh, here's one of the ones that uh, that I did. So wherever I could, I took those images and I found those. And if I have done one of those, uh, then I'm going to show those uh, for what I have. And then we'll look at the hand-colored version of the same image just to be able to do a comparison in between there. I'm not trying to say that my... Uh, my uh, ability to be able to do that was better. Uh, certainly I had better tools, better techniques available to them than they did during the period. I am really grateful for them to be able to do those kind of things because they were actually painting right on either the tintype or right on uh, the uh, photo, uh, the print uh, itself. Uh, I certainly have the advantage with uh, Photoshop uh, to be able to go in and just delete a layer or uh, just uh, you know do an undo if I don't like the results in there uh, to be able to do that. So let's actually take a look at the hand-colored version of the same image. Now, obviously, this one has uh, worn over time, uh, and you can see that it's lost quite a bit of definition in there. Certainly, some of that is age. Certainly, some of that uh, is uh, the, uh, the uh, method that they were using. Again, they're using watercolor. Uh, to be able to do that, to be able to apply those uh, for that. Uh, here's one that's interesting. There's a lot of images that you'll see uh, within this set 
uh, that are actually more, uh, and there's a lot of them within the uh, the areas uh, within the Civil War images as well, uh, that were more of a travel type of photo. There isn't anything, looking at this particular image, that you would say, oh, this is a Civil War image. It was. It was an area where uh, the Peninsular Campaign was going on uh, in uh, in uh, 1862 with McClellan in there, uh, but you wouldn't know it. If you did not see that caption on there, you would not realize that this is a Civil War image, but they uh, they did actually have uh, quite a few of them that were like this. Here's another one that was similar to that. This one is actually a bridge built by the 15th uh, New York uh, in there, and they built this uh, to be able to uh, cross over uh, because that they were cut off uh, because of a, a storm in there, and, and they got cut off on one side of uh, the uh, water, and uh, they needed to be able to access uh, to be able to get away. So uh, they built this bridge to be able to get across. Uh, here is that same one, though, as it was done in one of the color uh, ones of the period. So uh, again, wherever I could, I tried to be able to fit those in just so we could see that comparison. I like this one here. Uh, this one uh, is uh, an image here of uh, Fort Richardson in Arlington in here. I've done a couple of other ones. I don't have any in this set uh, that I've done of this particular image. The original from the Library of Congress for this, uh, the negative, unfortunately, is quite bad, uh, and so it doesn't lend itself uh, terribly well to be able to do this. You also see in here, if you're looking at this, uh, the cannon here is brass, the cannon here is brass. In reality, uh, these uh, should be uh, just black in there for those, uh, so they actually would take liberties for those, uh, just to be able to do something that would be a little more uh, a little more of interest in there, and so you would often see uh, people doing things like that. Uh, here is a federal battery uh, in uh, of Fair Oaks. I tried to do these more or less in chronological order. Here is the same image that was done. It's interesting that most of these were done during the Civil War. This one, however, uh, the uh, colorization for this one, if I recall, uh, that actually had a copyright date of like 1902 or 1903. Uh, so this one was done a bit after the war in there, uh, but you're seeing uh, the, uh, the hand-colored version that they did from that. Uh, here is a rather well-known image. Uh, this is a hospital uh, at a Savage Station in Virginia. This is the, the uh, colorization version that I did of it. Then a hand-colored one. I actually really like the hand-colored one in here for this. Uh, you notice that they did take dramatic license, in my opinion, uh, to be able to put in a number of uh, areas for uh, blood spots and that type of thing in here. Uh, when I looked at the image, and I'll go back to my version here for a moment, when I looked at the image, because I was able to look at it in detail uh, from the Library of Congress, I went in as close as I could to each of those. I did not see any evidence of there being blood in there, so I didn't add blood where it wasn't to, uh, where it, there wasn't an indication that it was there. Uh, these things that they're adding here, I think, were just added for a dramatic license. And in a lot of ways, it does make it more dramatic, uh, but I, I'm trying to make them more realistic. So uh, I just did them where I see them, not where uh, necessarily... Uh, that uh, it was possible to be adding them like they are in here. Uh, this is uh, McClellan, uh, or, uh, McDowell's uh, bodyguard. Uh, this is actually his uh, camp in here, and, and basically uh, that uh, uh, his area in here for this. And, and again, you see a lot of them in here that it was like, okay, just a bunch of green and a little bit of red and a couple of browns for uh, the house and uh, the uh, and the uh, and the wagons. Uh, in there, and then a little bit of sky, and that's it. So they didn't do a lot with the color in there for those. This is one of the ones that I did, obviously, uh, in here for this. Uh, and uh, what I like about this one, when we're looking at the hand-colored ones, is they actually put in a lot more color. So I didn't put in as vibrant of colors as they did on some of these, but they did try to be able to do those to be able to give some uh, some impact in there. And so we're seeing those added in there for those in here for these. This is uh, Hooker's headquarters in Antietam. Uh, in here, I believe this is also um, McClellan's headquarters, if I remember right, um, from there. I was there a number of years ago, and, and I believe it, it says Hooker's headquarters, and I'm using the uh, the uh, captions that were on the Library of Congress, uh, uh, and those were actually the original, uh, the original, uh, the or original ones that they had uh, from uh, the period on there. Uh, whenever possible, uh, but I believe this one is actually McClellan's headquarters as well as Hooker's. This is one of the ones that I think is actually probably most interesting, give you an idea of the contrast between uh, the ones uh, from uh, what I did uh, versus the ones from the period. Uh, so this is uh, Alan Pinkerton 
Uh, this is Alan Pinkerton here, uh, along with a number of members of the Secret Service. Now, Alan Pinkerton obviously was very well known at the time, uh, was a celebrity in in that regards. Uh, and you think if you were going to do an image of him and you were doing it for a commercial value, you would actually spend a lot of time and be able to put in a lot of uh, good detail on it. This is what the period image looked like. Just a complete wash out a complete disaster in my opinion it's just horrible uh, that you can see almost no details everything's almost completely gone uh, there's almost nothing that you can see from there what's interesting in this particular one is not only was this one done commercially uh, and uh, provided uh, to uh, for a sale but this one actually now belongs in the library of congress and was originally a uh, part of uh, the um, wow. Uh, uh, part of uh, the uh, collection uh, and owned by Alan Pinkerton. So this is Alan Pinkerton's personal one that he received from the company that produced it. And you think if you were making one of these and you made it for Alan Pinkerton, you'd do a little better job than that. But that's what they gave him. So that's what uh, that's what they had there for that. This is another one from the battlefield. This is another one uh, from Antietam here. And uh, let's actually take a look at the period one from that. So you're seeing the same image. I do like uh, what they did. I, I like what they did with the sky. I like what they did uh, overall for this. And you're seeing the same type of thing in here that you're seeing ones where the, the Confederates are more uh, in uh, in Union type of uniforms in there. It looks how it has that type of look for it uh, to it. Uh, this is one uh, for Burnside's uh, bridge in Antietam uh, there. Uh, and you see uh, some people up on the, uh, the uh, bridge uh, overpass there. You see some of the damage in there. If you go there today, it looks very much like that today. So it's very similar to that uh, at the moment. Uh, this is Middlebridge. So Middlebridge actually looks very much like uh, the Burnside Bridge, if you've ever been there. Middlebridge no longer exists. So it was actually destroyed in a flood a number of years ago in there. Uh, but uh, this is actually one uh, from the period in there. What's also interesting about this is that when you go to be able to look at this and the hand-colored one, uh, this is the only example that I have that uh, two different people did a hand colored version. So this is one hand colored version of it. And then this is the same image with another person's interpretation of that. Uh, it, is there things that are right or wrong about those? Oh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously uh, they had access to the source material. They had uh, some things that I didn't have access to. On the other hand, uh, that I had some tools uh, available to me that they don't have in there. I'm going to go ahead and just mute everybody again. Again, I'm going to try to keep everybody on mute. So uh, nothing personal. If I do mute you in there, I'm just trying to be able to uh, keep it uh, so that it's less distracting. I will open up uh, the audio uh, when we get to, to the end. So uh, you're certainly welcome to be able to do this. If you've ever been to the battlefield in Antietam, uh, where this is, is if you go to the visitor center, uh, right outside the visitor center, uh, that you'll see uh, Dunker Church. Uh, in there, and then uh, there is a display of artillery, and then this is here. So it's literally uh, steps away from uh, the uh, from where uh, the visitor center is today. I mean, literally uh, 10, 15 feet from the front front door is where this particular image is taken in there. Here's another one from Antietam, and again, one of those ones uh, showing uh, the period images versus uh, what it is that I had. So this is one that I did. And then this is the same image as a period image. And you'll see another one of those where they decided to add elements of blood. Uh, in this case, that they didn't put a whole lot. They did almost nothing for the uh, soldiers. They did nothing for the wood. They added a little bit of grass, a little bit of blood, and that was about it. So that's their entire colorization. And like I said, some of them are more interesting and impressive than others in there. Uh, this uh, spot on uh, Miller Farm in there, uh, this uh, location actually exists today. I, I didn't bring a picture. Or I don't uh, have a picture uh, showing it, uh, but uh, I did actually go to this particular spot again where it is. Uh, and today that there's actually a, a monument uh, on this uh, particular site. Uh, so you can go there and visit it. It's uh, uh, maybe a quarter mile uh, from the visitor center if you're there these days in there for that. This one is actually uh, one that I'm uh, kind of proud of. This is one of uh, Robert E. Lee's headquarters. Uh, Robbie Lee's headquarters uh, exist today uh, in there, and that uh, you can actually see it with all of the uh, stones on here. Uh, 
Uh, I actually did this one. It was one of the early ones that I did. Uh, and I actually had gone to the battlefield and I had taken a photograph uh, of uh, the um, uh, of the side of uh, this uh, particular building. And then I went in and colorized each of those stones because they're in still exactly the same place, obviously. I colorized each one of those. What I didn't realize at the time was that the uh, building had actually been uh, burned and uh, was uh, destroyed uh, in, um, in, in the late to 19th century. And that uh, I actually, um, they, they had it now as a gift shop and, and then you could go and you could, uh, you could visit it. There was a little museum in there. It was actually quite good, uh, but it wasn't uh, Lee's headquarters. It wasn't Lee's headquarters anymore. And uh, so that a lot of people were thinking that this had actually been rebuilt with uh, stones uh, from the original. They didn't realize that they were actually all exactly in the same position. Uh, I actually uh, shared this several years ago uh, for the Center for Civil War Photography uh, at a presentation that I was doing. Uh, and a number of people that uh, were there were actually part of uh, a team that was actually looking to be able to purchase uh, the property uh, to be able to restore it. And they did not realize that all of the stones were actually the originals. So they actually went and uh, confirmed it, that they were uh, based on uh, what it is that I had, and they matched all those stones, and they were able to say, yep, it's exactly the same. And so uh, that uh, they actually uh, used uh, this cover or this image for a cover for a book uh, to be able to help uh, for the purchase of the uh, property. And today it's completely restored as it was uh, and is now again part of the National Park Service. It's no longer a gift shop. It's no longer a little private museum in there. And then this is what the period version of that looked like. So you're seeing it here. And the color for the stones in there, they did a, a fairly nice job in here that uh, they did a different version of the same house from a slightly different angle. And in here, you see that they made it look almost like brick in here. So it's the same uh, the same location in here, the same side of the house, but now uh, they just colored it whatever way was convenient in there. So you see that type of thing. This is Mead, Mead's headquarters in uh, Gettysburg uh, there, dead on the battlefield more dead on the battlefield. And again, these are ones in here, these are uh, Confederates in here, and you'll see them, uh, so it appears that they're wearing Union uniforms, very common thing for them to be able to do uh, for that type of thing in here. Again, uh, more uh, ones with a Confederate dead in there uh, for that. Uh, this is uh, uh, Trossel's Farm, if you've been there uh, for that. Uh, these are actually horses, dead horses in the front there. Why you would want to hand colorize an image like that, I don't know. Uh, this uh, the image does exist within the Library of Congress, not one that I cho personally uh, chose to be able to do, but I'm just sharing it. This is probably the most obvious of uh, one where it is a Confederate soldier that they made it appear to be able to look like a Union soldier. Now, why would they do that? Well, to be honest, uh, that uh, it looked a lot more colorful uh, to be able to have a blue uniform than it did to be able to have a gray uniform. Uh, and that uh, they would rarely take pictures of the Union soldiers, but they didn't have very many opportunities to take pictures of the Confederate soldiers. So they'd take pictures of Confederate soldiers, but then when they were colorizing them, they would colorize them like they would with Union soldiers. So it was a little bit of an oddity in the way that they did it. Uh, so we're actually jumping forward in, from 1863 over to 1864. Uh, this is uh, the area for the Bermuda 100 or the Bermuda 100, and here is the hand-colored one in here. They did a nice job with uh, just putting in some things in here. I wasn't seeing any ever, any uh, any real indication that there was grass in here, uh, so I tried to be able to uh, do it as faithfully as I could uh, to be able to indicate where there was or was not grass uh, when I saw that. This is one that I like personally uh, because uh, it, it's not showing anybody of any uh, particular stature, so it's not you know Grant or Sherman or anybody, but just a nice image of that. And then uh, the uh, hand-colored version of that uh, same image as well. And again, uh, they put a lot of uh, green in here just to be able to help decorate it up. But I didn't see any indication there was actually any grass in there for those, uh, in there for that. So here's another one of uh, Sherman in here for this. This is one of those ones. I don't know if anybody watched uh, the uh, grant uh, that was um, on uh, this on last night, tonight, and tomorrow. Uh, in there. There were some hand-colored images. I wasn't participating in any of those. I wasn't aware of that uh, particular uh, show, uh, so I, I was not involved. But I did notice, uh, and I don't know if they're going to do it again tonight, but some of the ones that they had 
they had mistakes in here uh, like they're showing in here. So you notice in here uh, with Sherman, uh, you notice that the stars of his uniform, you can see it on both sides, uh, they're actually uh, painted in gold. Uh, they should be in here in white uh, like it's showing in here. Uh, and I did notice that on one of the images that was showing on the, on the episode of Grant uh, from last night, and that it was uh, an image of Grant, not Sherman. Uh, but uh, whoever did the colorization uh, colored it and colored the stars. So uh, they did it wrong. Uh, it's unfortunate that um, that I wasn't asked to participate. I would have been uh, happy to have helped them out and to be able to help correct that. But, uh, that, you know, it's like you got to appreciate the uh, time and effort that people put into those things. Uh, so here is uh, John Behold's uh, headquarters in Atlanta uh, in here, uh, obviously after the capture, uh, because you're seeing it with uh, uh, Union flags in there for that. Uh, Confederate forts in Atlanta in there, and then the same image done with a period one. I like what they did in here for this to be able to uh, help decorate it in here, but again, they didn't put a lot of effort in. Uh, the uh, cannon should have been green on the sides uh, for uh, artillery green, and you're not seeing a lot of that. They would uh, take shortcuts uh, for those type of things. Ponder House, also part of the Atlanta campaign. Uh, in here for this uh, well-known image in here. Let's actually take a look at the hand-colored version of that. So there's the same image again. Nicely done in this particular case, and, but uh, again, I didn't see any indication of grass in there, so I didn't include it if I didn't see it. Uh, this is uh, the railroad depot. This is actually before the burning of Atlanta, uh, so you're seeing uh, there as it was. There are images of the same area afterwards. Uh, I didn't have any of those that from the colorized set, and I didn't. I haven't any done any colorized ones, but there are a number of them available on the Library of Congress from those from that. This one is actually kind of interesting. This is one that I did in here. Uh, you see the uh, wagons in here, blue, and then it's a little hard to see, but uh, the spokes of the wagons are in red. Uh, that was what the supply core colors were. So blue wagon wagons with red wheels uh, in there, and that was actually. Uh, the standard in there for those. So all of these would have been blue wagons, blue wagons, blue wagons in there. And then if we look at the hand-colored version in there, that they just thought it was easier to be able to just make them brown or just to be able to leave them free. Uh, so they didn't uh, colorize them uh, as they could have or should have been uh, at the time period for that. So I, I do try to be able to uh, do a lot of research. I do a lot of research online. I actually uh, work with a lot of historians. I work with a lot of museums. Uh, to be able to get the colorizations right. So I do have a reason for every one of the colors that I choose in there. Oftentimes with civilian clothes, I won't be able to tell uh, what the color should have been, uh, but uh, you know, I try to use uh, period cloth or clothing in there to be able to do my samples from. Just another one in here, uh, this is uh, Fort Brady in there. Uh, this is one in here, uh, and you see uh, a monitor in here. This is actually a double turreted monitor, uh, so it's kind of interesting in here. If you look in the background, uh, most of the monitors that you see uh, that uh, they had uh, just a single turret in there, but uh, this is a double turreted one. Uh, so it actually had two guns on there. So a little bit of uh, something different in there for that. This is actually one that I just did yesterday. Uh, I've actually liked this image and uh, the uh, I had the hand colored version in my uh, set for a while. And then I thought, you know, I should actually just go and find this image. So I went and, and uh, found it on the Library of Congress and then I put this one together. Uh, again, I have no idea what uh, what uh, this is. Uh, Jesse um, uh, Grant in here, and um, and and uh, and obviously and, and Mrs. Grant, uh, what their uh, colors of their clothes were. But uh, here is the hand colored one, and you see some differences there. So they chose to be able to put him into a blue. I did try it in blue. Uh, it just didn't look uh, quite that good when I was uh, playing with it. And I wanted to be able to do red on the leather for the chair in there. Uh, so I didn't want to be able to match it. Uh, I thought it was uh, too much if I tried to match it for uh, for Gloria's uh, dress in there. Uh, so I just left that one alone for that. This is uh, Grant's uh, horse, uh, Cincinnati. Uh, so he actually had a couple of different horses uh, and that uh, he actually would send them out to get photographs sometimes. If he didn't have time to be able to pose for a photograph himself, uh, he'd send the horses out to get uh, uh, photographed. And so here is the hand-colored version of the same one. I like this one. This is one that is really well done, in my opinion, in there for that, uh, for the period time pieces in there for that. Here's a view along Dutch Gap. If you're not familiar, uh, Dutch Gap was created to be able to uh, get around some Confederate uh, fortifications. Uh, when they did that, 
they spent uh, all of this time to be able to get around the fortifications. And then by the time that they really were completing it, uh, that the war was pretty much over, uh, the uh, the shortcut that they made by building this canal and gap in there, though, is actually still in use today. So uh, that, uh, well, that it was something that was rushed through during the war. It is actually something that, uh, that they still take advantage of today. So here's another view along the gap uh, in here. And another view of the same thing. You can find it interesting what it is that they thought was in, important enough to be able to hand color. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of that type of thing in here. Some ar army wagons at uh, City Point. City Point was where uh, the Grant that we saw earlier with his family, uh, that's where uh, that was. It was at City Point in there for that. Resting atop some fortifications and the hand-colored version of the same image in there for that. Again, more uh, images of uh, Confederate dead. Uh, this is one that I did. Notice in here, I did put a small amount of blood on the forehead, but not uh, greatly uh, to the extent that they uh, tried to do it. And this is another one, if you notice on here, this is a Confederate soldier in here, obviously in Confederate uniform in there. And then when we're seeing it in here, uh, that they uh, made it appear to be a Union uniform uh, in why they would do that. Uh, you know, it's like, I don't think it really helped, uh, but uh, it's what they chose to do. This one is uh, at uh, Fort Sumter. If you notice the date, April 14th, 1865, uh, this was uh, the date that uh, they uh, raised the flag at Fort Sumter. Uh, it was um, when they uh, had uh, uh, General Anderson come in uh, to be able to uh, uh, participate in the ceremony. They had actually invited Lincoln to be able to come down. Uh, Lincoln said he was busy. He had a play to go to that night and he wouldn't be able to attend. Uh, I'm thinking maybe he probably should have gone, but um, you know, we'll never know uh, what to, what would have been there. There's another view outside of Fort Sumter at the same time period in there. Let's actually take a look at the original. So there's the original for that uh, that they did. Did a nice job, in my opinion, to be able to do this. Uh, you can go and you can visit this today. A lot of the rocks and things are there. Obviously, uh, all of the other materials are gone. They've cleaned that up in there, but, uh, you know, certainly the rocks and things are there. Why you would do a hand-colored version of a damaged house, I don't know, uh, but they did, so I tried to be able to match and recreate that one in there for that. So there's the period one for that. This is actually one of my favorites, one of my favorites for a couple of reasons. Uh, I actually uh, spent uh, seven and a half years in the Navy, so uh, I can appreciate uh, other uh, sailors and what it is that they were going through. I also find it interesting just from the standpoint uh, that this is one of those ones that uh, I did the colorization, we're seeing a hand colorization in there, and now we're stepping back into what it is that we would typically see, so that uh, here is the hand colored version of that, and then there is the same image with a period print uh, that you would see in black and white uh, from the same one. So that's typically the kind of things that you would see in there for that. Now uh, that, uh, oops, let me just do that again. Ah, let me try that one more time. There we go. Let these uh, scroll through. These are the uh, people that provided uh, the original images uh, that uh, I actually uh, was using on there. So I did want to at least acknowledge those individuals because uh, the individuals, uh, the images came from a number of different sources. So uh, I wanted to be able to acknowledge all of the ones uh, that uh, had provided images over the time. Now with that, I do want to just share a couple of handfuls uh, that uh, I don't have hand colored ones, but these are ones that I've added since then that I really should just like uh, individually. Uh, and they're just random images in here. So uh, this is a view of the uh, uh, of the artillery, uh, the captured artillery at the at the rockets in Virginia. Uh, this is one that I actually personally uh, really kind of like just a uh, family life in uh, Fort Slocum, uh, which is uh, outside of uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, and they would actually bring their family in there. You see a small child and wife and kids in there for that. Not uncommon. They would actually have them there. Uh, and then uh, when they went off to war, obviously, uh, that uh, the family would stay behind. But when they were in camp, oftentimes that uh, they were able to bring their family in. Uh, here's one of uh, Sherman in Atlanta at uh, Fort Number 7. Uh, a favorite of mine as well of uh, firing a Quaker gun uh, in here. So 
uh, it was actually uh, just a you know a log in there but uh, i i just like the it's just amusing i i, I found it uh, quite uh, quite humorous in there for that there's another one of uh, sherman's men in a captured fort one of uh, lincoln uh, with uh, pinkerton and uh, mcclurland uh, lincoln's funeral car in 1865 the uh, the 13 inch mortar the dictator uh, this is outside of uh, Petersburg. I have another one of this uh, one also uh, that was actually done uh, as um, uh, on the back of a, a railroad car, but this is uh, when it was mounted in there. This one is actually a, a, a personal favorite. I brought this one up in here uh, because when you go to the Library of Congress and looking at the images, uh, they'll list the caption in there. And they list the caption as it was listed on the card uh, of, uh, of the record when it was... Uh, when it was donated to them some of those they didn't have uh, a, a description or the description that was written was incorrect uh, this one is uh, the uh, the galley gun in uh, fort McAllister in new georgia you can go to fort McAllister today and you can visit this particular area in there and uh, that uh, john b galley uh, was the commander of the fort he was actually killed uh, in there, and then they named this gun uh, in, in, for him, uh, and it was a Confederate gun that was uh, firing uh, back at the Union uh, positions. Uh, this is right along uh, the uh, the river there, so uh, he uh, they were firing uh, right back into the river for the Union boats that would come up. The reason that I included this one in here is because that when you go out to the Library of Congress, that it actually uh, will give the description for that. The description for this one was actually listing this one as Swamp Angel, which I knew was not true. And so I did quite a bit of research in there. And uh, then I actually uh, ended up uh, getting uh, Jack Melton, who is the uh, the uh, owner of um, uh, Artilleryman Magazine and uh, for uh, the historical publications in there. He is also the, uh, the owner and the editor for uh, Civil War News, which my wife writes for. Uh, in there, uh, I got his assistance and Tally Kirkland, who is uh, the uh, he, he is one of the guides at uh, McAllister, uh, and we were able to identify that uh, with some other supporting images uh, that the Library of Congress already had, and we got them to be able to change it. So I've had him uh, change uh, several uh, images uh, with the captions in there based on uh, the proof that we were provided. So I was very proud of, to be able to accomplish that. And then uh, final one in here is uh, one of my uh, wife's favorite in here. Uh, Captain, Captain Gibson's uh, flying artillery. So uh, this is uh, just one that uh, she just loves. If you notice this image, though, uh, there is actually four uh, artillery pieces in here. Uh, so you're seeing uh, one, two, three, and four different artillery pieces. There is one of them in here that is in brass. Uh, I did actually go uh, to uh, Jack Melton, who is an expert in Civil War artillery, and I showed him close-ups of all of these guns uh, to be able to confirm uh, what the uh, colorization for each of those should have been. Uh, and so this one is actually a brass piece. All the other are iron in here. So that's why you do see that difference in here for that. So that is what I had to share with you tonight. I wanted to say thank you for uh, just spending some time uh, doing this. Uh, I will, let's actually take a look at the uh, comments and questions that we have in here. Uh, I'll uh, respond to those. Actually, let me go back, uh, put um, something back up there. We'll at least put an image back up there. Well, I uh, take a look through those, and then I'll open up the audio here as well uh, if you have uh, questions or comments in there from that. So let's see in here what questions do we have. Uh, are you digitizing the negative? So uh, that what I uh, did was that I actually got these from the Library of Congress. So I actually did not scan any of these originally. These are available from the Library of Congress in there. And so you can actually go to the Library of Congress, uh, and that's actually uh, what it was that I was looking at here. Uh, this is uh, on the Library of Congress. Uh, there, you can actually download the negatives. So I'll actually post this into the chat area if anybody is interested. That's where you can find the ones from the Library of Congress. There's also uh, the uh, Brady Handy collection. Uh, these are the ones that were part of uh, Matthew Brady and his collection. Uh, Handy is uh, the uh, individual that um, uh, was uh, that donated it. So that's why it says Brady Handy there for that. So I posted those two in there for that. So that's actually where those uh, came from. So I actually got the scans from the Library of Congress, downloaded those from there, and then I did my colorizations on top of that. Um, uh, Janet is asking, uh, how did you get started in colorizing historic photos? Well, it's actually uh, kind of interesting. Uh, in uh, 2008, my wife gave me 
a book on Photoshop uh, and that it had, um, it's about uh, 400 pages long and, and it had two pages on uh, colorization uh, in there. And so I took those two pages uh, and I started playing with that and I thought, oh, what's the oldest image? So I, I got old uh, family photos and that type of thing and I started uh, trying to colorize those. And I thought, what's the oldest photo that I could find? So I went looking for ones from the Library of Congress and then I discovered that uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, I looked for ones from the Civil War and I discovered that uh, the Library of Congress had the original negatives and they'd actually posted them online. And uh, so uh, within about six months uh, that I started uh, hand coloring those uh, and uh, then I opened up a website and started uh, sharing them with people and people got interested in them and they started offering them commercially and basically that's where it went from that so that's how I got interested in doing that because I've always been interested in history I've always been interested in this period of time I actually have uh, three ancestors that fought in the Civil War so uh, personally I have a, a great interest in it uh, from that I've lived near some of the battlefields so I'm interested in it from that perspective uh, but uh, this actually just got me an opportunity to be able to uh, get me more personally I, I actually feel like when I'm doing these images that I'm actually spending a little bit of time with uh, these individuals, uh, even though that, uh, you know, they, they've passed away uh, over a century ago, uh, that it gives me an opportunity to just spend a few more minutes with each one of them. Uh, does the Library of Congress let you borrow the glass and negatives? Absolutely not. They do not do that. Uh, you can make appointments and reservations to be able to go and view them, but you, uh, you're not touching them and you're not uh, handling them. I've actually never handled them personally, so I just use the online ones. A uh, soldier in the Pinkerton photo holding the tent uh, pole is actually uh, the first female detective. Interesting, interesting. I was not aware of that. So thank you, uh, Janet, for uh, sharing that. Uh, her name was Kate uh, Warren uh, in there. So I have to go and take a look at uh, if um, uh, what uh, the uh, Library of Congress has uh, uh, commenting on that. Uh, if you have uh, information uh, supporting that uh, in there, uh, that uh, we could actually go and see if there's anything uh, from that, we may be able to get them to be able to update. I have a few contacts there now from having done this a few times, uh, but uh, we may be able to get them to update their uh, their listing in there for that. So let me just go, I'm going to just pull that listing up here real quick and see if it lists who those are. It does indicate, uh, this is the listing for that one. indicates the individuals in there so uh, we may need to be able to go through and just to be able to clarify that and see if that's the same one so if we have any evidence or uh, supporting uh, things that we can provide the Library of Congress we may be able to see some of that. Uh, similar to the uh, colorized uh, fashion plates in uh, Godies are uh, no two colori uh, colorized tintypes the same it's uh, the subject to the artist's interpretation. Yeah absolutely uh, completely up to them on what it is they wanted to be able to do. Uh, so uh, that uh, there's a lot of variety on there. Uh, like I said, I see the ones that were done for personals a lot more, um, a lot better uh, than the ones that are are there for uh, the public ones uh, in there for that. Uh, the hand colored ones uh, that were privately done, I think, were, were the best in my opinion. Uh, can people purchase your uh, colorized image on your site? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, thank you for that uh, in there. Uh, so uh, let's actually do this. I'm going to go here and I'll just uh, put. Uh, the link in there for that. I wasn't trying to be able to make this, uh, but uh, since there was a question about this, I wasn't trying to be able to make this an advertisement for my site, but I'll go ahead and put a link in here for that. So I'll put a link into the chat. That's the area on my site where you can actually pick that up. Uh, and if you want to be able to go and take a look at, uh, at the work that I did in there, it actually has all of my images uh, plus uh, ones I do ones outside of the Civil War as well, so just be aware I do have more of those in there. Uh, there is a discount if you are uh, a member of the uh, Pasadena Civil War Roundtable. Uh, there is a discount uh, uh, code that was included uh, in there for uh, the newsletter. I'm not going to share it here uh, to be able to get uh, people to encourage them to be able to join uh, in there uh, for that. Uh, the Swamp Angel is now in a park in Trenton. That's correct. Uh, it is actually, uh, I do actually have a an image of the Swamp Angel uh, as it looked uh, when it was, uh, after it was damaged in there, the Swamp Angel was was broken, it was destroyed in there for that. Uh, the image that I had was not the Swamp Angel, it was misidentified as the Swamp Angel, it was actually the galley gun in there for that. 
uh, have a, an originator stereo view of uh, their artillery, and can I get it colorized? Uh, absolutely, I'd be happy to be able to talk to you about that. I do have uh, uh, private colorizations uh, for those. Uh, you know, just uh, you get uh, my contact information uh, in there. Uh, actually, uh, from my website there, you can uh, that I posted. There's a, a contact link information, and you can uh, contact me directly from there for that. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we had a business unit that was uh, sold uh, frame prints of these images a while back, and they worked with uh, Polaroid three years ago. Oh, interesting in there for that. I'm going to go ahead and open the audio here uh, for everybody. If anybody has uh, comments in there that they would like to be able to do. Uh, you can uh, just go ahead and just unmute yourself locally if you're still muted. If you have a question that you would like to be able to ask, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. If there's uh, you know anything else that I can help with, uh, just uh, let me know in here as well. And of course, you can publish uh, post out to the uh, uh, to the chat window as well if you have a question that you're uh, you'd prefer to be able to do that rather than uh, just a uh, Posting in here. No questions, or they got their questions answered here. How long? How long did you do a photo? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, that uh, it depends on how long, uh, how detailed it is. So if you look at an image like this. Uh, this image uh, took me uh, several days. It's probably three or four days worth of work in there to be able to do that. You see an image where, uh, that, like with uh, Grant, with uh, uh, his uh, his son and his wife uh, at uh, at City Point. Uh, that one I did yesterday. I did it in the afternoon. So it depends on the complexity, really, the amount of detail in there. Uh, so it really depends on what it is that, that's going on with that. How did you pick the color for the uniforms? The trousers seem like a really pale, bright blue, you know, a sharp blue. Is that what they were really like? Uh, yeah, actually, I'll, I'll give you a better example in there. Uh, let me go in for this is actually probably a better example of what the uh, of what the uh, uh, pants would have looked like in there for that. I've adjusted those uh, periodically over the years uh, when I've started working with uh, with uh, more uh, historians in there for that. Uh, and uh, that uh, those should probably be adjusted a bit in, in there for that. Uh, this one is probably uh, pretty close uh, to being accurate. Uh, it was uh, not as bright of a blue. I, I did see ones that uh, that they would have those. I'm trying to see if I have any in the examples that I have here uh, for that. Uh, but I would see uh, examples of one uh, where uh, they were uh, made to those uh, specifications and they would be uh, brighter or, or darker depending on what it was. And you'd see a lot of variety of things. Also, it was one of those things that you would see uh, images uh, from uh, the uh, from the South, for example. I'll just move this over. Uh, that the uh, Confederate uniforms were in all different colors. You would see a gray, you would see uh, a blue, you would see uh, more of, of a, a brown in there. Uh, so uh, there was just huge uh, variety of colors for those type of things. Uh, in there, and the same thing, uh, obviously, with the, if we go over into the Union side, uh, with the uh, Union uniforms as well, uh, there was just a, a great uh, variety uh, of uh, the uniforms that we saw on here. Uh, so that uh, th this one is probably uh, very, very close to, to what the images or the uh, uniform would have looked like. And then I see some of them in there uh, that were uh, quite a bit brighter uh, than they, what they would have been. So it, it varies in there depending on which ones that we're looking at. Thank you. What other color? What are there uh, questions in here? Just a side note, Don Hunt, Don Hunt Morgan, uh, the cavalry officer in the South, uh, wore a Union, a captured Union general uniform with pride as a symbol of conquest. <laughs> You know, it, it's interesting what happens on some of those type of things in there. I mean, you look at like uh, uh, Brunel in here. Uh, Brunel was a Union soldier at the beginning of the war. Uh, he actually uh, stayed in the, in the Union for the entire uh, period. He ended up becoming a lieutenant by the end of the war. Uh, but this uniform here, it actually still exists. It's actually at the battlefield at Manassas, if you go there. 
uh, but you would swear it was a Confederate uniform, but it was actually a Union uniform in there. So it's actually, uh, you know, you think of them as, as being a, a Union blue and Confederate gray, uh, but the variety of the uniforms was actually much, much greater than that. Uh, it was really uh, quite a bit, uh, uh, quite interesting. In there, so. I, well, I just like to compliment, I'd like to compliment you on your work. I think you really bring this to life. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I thank see, you. I do see another comment in there uh, from uh, Craig. Uh, the jackets were uh, darker blue due to the fact that they were often removed. Uh, their jackets, their pants would fade in direct sunlight. Uh, that is true. Uh, that would happen in there. Uh, they were wool uniforms for that, and you would see variety for that. Uh, you also see when you're actually working with uh, the, uh, the original uh, images and the negatives when you're working in the black and white portions, you would see them in darker or lighter in there. So I use the same color to be able to colorize them. And then if for the ones that they were lighter, uh, you would see them. So for example, if you notice these two, uh, I actually use the same color blue on here that I did for these two, uh, but it just turned out a lot darker on here uh, because uh, this was a cleaner, uh, probably a new uniform, and this one was one that had actually uh, been uh, more in use. Uh, so you see the differences between those, even though I was actually using the same color uh, in between those two. Any other uh, comments, questions that we have in here? Well, if we don't have any more questions, I want to personally thank Dave for doing this. Dave is not only our speaker this month, but he's the person that's making these uh, virtual meetings possible, and so we have to th thank him on two accounts uh, oh, yeah. for being a, a huge supporter of our roundtable. Uh, and if you have any questions or uh, concerns or feedback on these programs, feel free to drop us a line at our um, Pasadena Civil War Roundtable uh, website. It's Pasadena CWRT uh, dot org, and the link for the contact is on there. And we'd be love to love to be able to respond to you and hear your feedback on these. Dave, do you have anything more? Uh, I didn't have oh, it. Nice, I will nice post. Picture uh, of our website. Yeah, I will post uh, the uh, link to the website uh, on here, uh, just so that everybody has it in the chat area, uh, so that uh, if you uh, do have any questions, I'll uh, just stay around for a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, otherwise, uh, thank you for so much for uh, joining and participating this evening. Uh, I do appreciate uh, the opportunity to be able to share. Uh, the image and the work that I did. Uh, I did those because it's something that I have a personal interest in, uh, but I do really appreciate that others uh, share and appreciate uh, the uh, the work and the effort that it takes to be able to do this. So thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. I'll just stay on here for another uh, two minutes or so if anybody has any uh, last minute questions that they want to ask. Otherwise, uh, we'll just go ahead and close it out. I just want to give anybody that uh, didn't have the opportunity no, to ask a question or anything. Hi, excuse me. Hello, hi. yes. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a question. I just, those images were stunning. I, I just want to thank, oh, thank you for you your so work much. Appreciate and that. doing that. I appreciate yeah, that. I wish, I wish I worked in schools for many, many years, and uh, I wish there was a way to get those images into the textbooks. You know, I think it would uh, reach the children more than the images that we that we presented to them. And uh, seeing seeing the actual images somehow, I mean, I can't imagine those kids would ever grow up to, you know, vote for a war after seeing images like that. So. Uh, Thank you. You know, it's, really it's interesting that you, that you say that. Uh, that uh, I was always interested in the in the Civil War uh, from uh, from the images and things that I had seen, and and uh, I grew up in a military family, so we moved around quite a bit. Uh, and mm. my uh, my wife's nephew, uh, when um, when I started doing these, I've been doing them for about a year, and that he. Uh, uh, 
we brought a bunch of the images and said, oh, would you be interested in looking at them? And he was like, oh, where are you? we did the Civil War last year. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't need to. Oh, please. So you know, yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. Well, first first off, you've got an incredible learning curve <laughs> and, and, and a really, I would say, good artistic sense. Um, and obviously a great wife, too. So, but anyway. Um, She's no, upstairs watching, no. so, uh, you know, oh, good. Uh, for, the, for that. <laughs> good. But no, uh, that was my experience working in schools. I, I, I fell in love with the Civil War because well, I was in a seventh grade classroom, and, and the, the guy who was teaching it was a military man. He'd been on the, uh, on the Nimitz, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, great military man, and he taught history. And on that spring break of that year, you know, I, I, uh, I went to Gettysburg, you know, just, uh, but, but yeah, I came to it late in life, but the children, the children in that classroom, it just didn't get them somehow. And I, I so regret that. Well, I what so I was going to say was that, uh, that we uh, that we had those images, uh, and that uh, he said, "Oh, you know," I said, "I'm I'm not really interested in in uh, in, uh, in looking at it because we already did the Civil War." And so uh, my uh, my wife's uh, sister uh, that she she you know she's like, "Oh, you should look at him. You should look." So that he it, and we brought albums of them. So. He started looking at them, and he spent a couple of hours going through them. Once he started looking at them, he got really interested because that if you and if you look at the images on our site, that, that it will actually go through and then it will tell you the the story and the history uh, behind the image. So it's not just the image, but it actually tells you the story of uh, who that individual was or you know what their role uh, during the Civil War was, so that you learn something about them. And the reason that I'm posting these up here is That's that somebody wonderful. Somebody did post on here. Uh, may I see a picture of the woman that was discussed earlier? I'm not sure specifically which woman. So, uh, and I, I don't think that it was specifically from this page. Uh, I do, I did do one earlier of uh, of um, uh, of, uh, uh, of um, Grant's wife on there, uh, Gloria Dent. Uh, so, it may be her that you were thinking of, uh, and I can bring her up again. Uh, so, uh, I'll share that one again in here. But uh, I, I'm not sure specifically. Other than that, uh, specifically, which woman uh, was being uh, was being mentioned in there uh, from whoever asked that? So I apologize about that. So this is uh, my version of of her. That may have been the one in there for that. Uh, the other one not. And there's some. I don't know. Any other uh, comments or uh, questions, feedbacks uh, that uh, I can help with here? Not Grant's wife. It was one that I shared though. Uh, let me see. It might have been the one that Janet identified as being the female spy. Oh, right, 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 right. I know which one we're talking about. So that one, let me just do it this way. Let me get to the right one. There we go. So she's saying it's here, it's this one. And so what Janet said, Janet, are you still here? Or did you leave? It's the, it's the one by the pole. So this one? Yes. Saying this is, that was her. Uh, so let's actually see what the Library of Congress says and see if we can get that uh, corrected. So the Library of Congress for this particular image in there says, standing George H. Bangs, John Bab Babcock, and Augustus Littlefield, and uh, she had identified that as being uh, she gave a name in there. Yeah, see, they named three people, but they're four standing. Because there's one inside the tent standing. Talking about this one in the back? Right. There are oh, four so people standing, and they only named three. Oh, they named the three. So you're saying it's not, I was thinking you meant this one. So you're talking about the one in the, in the background. You can't really see them very well. No, well, Janet was saying that the one by the tent pole is the female spy. And that they may have named the one in, in the tent. Oh, I instead see. Of okay. Him. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I had not heard that before. Uh, it's interesting what you find out about these things when you start uh, digging into some of this uh, in there. Uh, I mean, uh, one of my favorites in here, 
uh, is uh, is the one of uh, if I can find him in here. Let me go back over here. Uh, mm -hmm. Of uh, Mosby. <laughs> Uh, Mosby, um, obviously well known as the Great Ghost, uh, in there uh, after the war, he actually moved out to California, and he actually lived in Pasadena and was a friend of uh, the uh, Patton's uh, family and uh, was actually a mentor to uh, George Patton uh, in the uh, in the late 1890s. In there for that, so uh, and uh, the, where the uh, Patton's uh, family uh, had their home is actually now on the grounds of uh, the uh, Huntington Library. Uh, so it's kind of interesting <laughs> that uh, that area was connected even prior to the Huntington being involved with it uh, and uh, their involvement with, the, with obviously, with the Civil War today, uh, that it was actually involved with the, the uh, Civil War uh, previously as well. Anything else? So if there are no other comments, I'll go ahead and close it out. I do want to thank everybody just for uh, spending a few minutes and, uh, with us. I did record this too, by the way, so I'll be posting it out to uh, onto uh, YouTube uh, later. It should be up hopefully in the next day. Or two. I'll provide the link to a channel oh, for that if you'd like to be able to have a copy of that or, or to be able to review it uh, in there. Uh, if you do have, if anybody does have any uh, personal questions or anything, uh, you just feel free to reach out to me uh, on my website. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, you know, it's like a, uh, I get people uh, contacting me every day uh, about uh, uh, questions about images, uh, what, uh, you know, that, that I know about it, if I can help on things. And always happy to be able to uh, talk with uh, somebody that's interested in the war. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time and thank uh, have you. a good evening. Thank you. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Good night. Thanks.